Now, let's look at uh, the estimation of parameters in a typical time series. So, the following data is observed for n equal to 500 realizations from a time series. Okay, I have observed the data for the last uh, or for some 500 observations. We got that sigma xi, right, the summations of xi. Sigma xi is given as 13153.32. One three one five three point three two. Then we also have x i minus x bar squared, right? Sigma x i minus x bar squared. This is given to us as 3153.67 then we also have sigma xi minus x bar multiplied by xi plus 1 minus x bar so sigma xi minus x bar multiplied by x x i plus 1 minus x bar correct so this is also given which is 2176.03 all right now what is the question estimate using the data above the parameters mu a1 and sigma from this model xt minus mu is equal to a1 times x minus mu <coughs> plus sigma t. Now, if I have to take it as, uh, 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 as uh, for this, xt minus mu is equal to a1 times xt minus mu. So, let me take uh, the expected values here expected value of xt minus mu is equal to a1 times expected value of xt minus 1 minus mu plus expected value of epsilon t. Now this is giving me the whole stuff expected value of xt minus mu is equal to a1 times again expected value of xt minus 1 minus a1 mu plus 0. So overall if I have to look out for the mu it is directly coming from the data. If I am looking at the mu now that I have sigma xi mu can be directly computed from sigma xi because it's just a mean part. So mu I can directly estimate from the sigma xi divided by n 500 giving me that the mu is around 26.3. Now look out for this expression. See this is a AR1 process, autoregressive process of order 1. And if you look at it, the coefficient xt minus uh, mu is equal to a1 times xt minus 1. So this a1 which is nothing but the coefficient of the independent variable. In a regular regression y equal to a plus bx, the b we know that it is nothing but the covariance between x and y divided by the variance of x. Now here also this a1 I should be the covariance between xt minus 1 and xt divided by the variance of 
variants of x t minus 1 or in a way I can very well write it as covariance between x t minus 1 and x t I could very well write it as the expected uh, the, the sigma of x t minus x bar and x t minus 1 or t plus 1 minus x bar. So this part comes out there and even the denominator I can write it as x i minus or x t minus x bar. If I have to look at for the variance, I can very well look at it as x t minus x bar squared. <laughs> now if you look at this, this is nothing but this I can write it as again x t minus x bar into x t plus 1 minus x bar. Both of them will remain the same which means the above one will come out as the covariance. The other one is even the product of their individual standard deviation. So this can even be taken as autocorrelation function also. So that's the reason. A1 is nothing but the autocorrelation between the two, which will work out as 2176 divided by 3153. So, A1 is directly working out to 0.68. Then, I also require the variance. Variance of xt minus mu is equal to a1 times a1 or uh, a variance of xt minus mu comes out uh, again on both the sides if I am taking uh, variance of xt minus mu should be the same as variance of xt minus 1 minus mu also because at the same time, anything that is subtracted from the mu, the variance should be the same because a constant is getting subtracted here. And I know this variance of xt minus mu is same as variance of xt. Variance of xt is nothing but gamma 0, which is the autocovariance part, autocovariance with a lag 0. So, gamma 0 should be same as variance of xt minus mu. And this should also be same as variance of xt minus 1 minus mu. Which means probably I can take this directly. Gamma 0 is nothing but a1 squared times gamma 0. Plus variance of uh, epsilon t is sigma squared because it's a white noise process. So from here I can say gamma 0 times 1 minus a1 squared is equal to sigma squared. And from here comes, so sigma squared, now I know A1 is already there. So I can very well find out my, uh, using this gamma 0. Now what is gamma 0 here? I need to get uh, the auto, uh, here I need to get the variance. So variance is nothing but this number divided by 500. So probably if I am getting the variance x minus xi bar divided by n sigma is already done. So the variance is this much. So gamma 0 is that much. So from here I should be able to find out uh, sigma squared. Sigma squared comes out to gamma 0 times which is this gamma 0 times 1 minus a1 squared. So works out that my sigma squared is this much and from here I should be able to find out sigma which is the square root of this number giving me 1.817. After fitting the model with the parameters found above, it was calculated that the number of turning points of the residuals. Okay number of turning points of the residuals observed is 280. Now we have a test for white noise. I really want to see whether this uh, whether 
the 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 epsilon t is generated from a white noise or not for that white noise the mean and the variance under the assumption of white noise we have the mean and the variance of the number of changing points if you remember we have formula for number of changing points number of changing points is a random variable with a mean of 2 into n minus 2 by 3 and a variance of 16 n minus 29 by 90 so i can find out with the 500 observations so the mean of the number of turning points should be 2 into n minus 2 by 3 which is 2 by 3 times n minus 2 500 minus 2 which tells me on an average there should be 332 turning points and uh, i also need the variance of the number of turning points what is the variance of the number of turning points 16 n minus 29 16 times n minus 29 divided by 90 so the variance of the number of turning points is this standard deviation of number of turning points is the square root of the variance so 95% confidence interval for the turning points is 88 uh, sorry 332 minus 1.96 times the standard deviation which is uh, 313.6 and on the higher side i'll see 332 plus 1.96 times the standard deviation which is 350 so if it is a white noise the 95% confidence interval for the number of turning point should be anywhere between 313 and 350 whereas the actual observed number of turning points is only 280 so because the observed number of turning points is much lesser than what should have been in case of uh, a white noise there is a strong evidence that the errors are not closely generated from a typical white noise so that's the way out to typically a uh, test for whether a particular process that is generated is from white noise or not all right